um, the odious soul, and I am back to give you guys an update. Oh, Lord. So if you've been following along with these live vlogs, you know I'm trying to move to Georgia. I'm actually in an Airbnb in Georgia right now, laying on a bed on my laptop, doing some work. I had finally caught up with some emails. So I was like, you know what, let me go live because people keep messaging me, asking me what's going on. So here I am, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I was really hoping we were gonna get to close this last week um, or this week or whatever. So we are trying to buy a house, Mike and me are trying to buy a house um, outside of Atlanta and Georgia. And uh, he's already started working here. He's been here working since June 20th. And I was informed that a second appraisal had to be done by the mortgage company, by Wells Fargo. Um, they had ordered it and it was going to take like two weeks to get it back. Now we were supposed to close on the 28th, 21st originally. Um, so this appraisal was going to push it back. We weren't even going to get the report back. It was due back on the 27th. So we got the sellers to extend our contract until August 4th, which is this coming Friday. So, um, the report was not back on Thursday, the 27th, um, stupid appraisal guy was supposed to be there on a Friday. He didn't show up to Tuesday. Supposed to have the report to us Thursday, but he didn't. He got it back to us at the very end of the day on Friday, the 28th, um, only to find out that he did the appraisal for $68,000 less than the first appraisal. Now, the first appraisal was for a VA loan. It came in 1,000 over what we were, what we're paying for this house. So how in the world does a second appraisal dude come $68,000 less than the first? So where does that put us? Back at square one because Wells Fargo's not gonna give us a mortgage for less than what the value of the property is. Um, you know, we have to have the 20% down with the loan that we're doing and with the money that we're doing for closing. Like there is no extra money to make up for the difference. So right now we have rebuted the appraisal. I did a bunch of... You know me, I did a bunch of research, pulled some comps both on current homes on the market and homes that have sold because he included a lot of homes that were on half an acre of land. And the area that we're looking in um, is flooded with homes on half an acre or less. And he was only valuing an acre of land at 20,000. That's number one. And then you can't find a piece of property here on an acre or more of land for less than $400,000. So like... Just, I'm, I'm just in, I'm in, uh, back in limbo. So um, hopefully we get uh, the appraisal reworked with homes that are only on an acre of land or higher or more, you know, acreage. Um, and it comes back closer to at least 400,000. You know, maybe the sellers will come down. Maybe they won't. I just don't want to lose this house. Like, I can't even tell you. You know, I've already put 4000 into it between the earnest money and the inspections and everything else. Not to mention the travel time going back and forth, um, you know, and just everything else. So I'm currently in between homes. Uh, sold my house in Maryland. All my stuff is there. So we are going to load it onto a truck on Sunday, no matter what happens with the house. Um, we're just going to take the leap of faith, put everything in a truck, and if it ends up in storage for the rest of my life, I guess so be it. Just this process is so frustrating. I just want this house so bad. Like, it's not too big. It's not too small. It is, like, just right for all of our needs. And um, Mike's daughter, Sophie, was supposed to start school today because today is August 1st, and this is when people, kids here in Georgia start school. So hopefully we'll get her into school within the next couple weeks. She'll be the new kid starting late, poor kid. But so that's kind of where things are um, with the house. Just, you know, I've never been homeless. And it's weird because it's like, I'm not going to be like normal homeless. You know, if I don't get this house, I still have the money in the bank for a down payment. But it's just weird to even comprehend it, like to be in between. I've owned a home for over 20 years. So to be where I'm at is a little scary. It's terrifying and to think that a bank holds my future um in their hands is enough to make me never want to have to get a mortgage ever again like if I buy another house um maybe I'll save my pennies a little bit better I doubt it but like 
man, it's just like this whole process just feels like a big gimmick. It's terrible. But anyway, on a positive note, I got to ride an Aprilia RS660 today. Um, I went to Southeast Motorcycles in Douglasville and took a bike for a test ride. And it was pretty amazing. You know, like I am currently riding on an MT-07 at home. Hey, David, how are you? Um, you know, so uh, the MT-07, you have to work to ride it. Like if you're riding it hard and fast, like you have to work. So the Aprilia was a lot easier. There was a little a couple little things that, you know, I might have changed with it. But overall, like I would love to get that bike out on the track and see what it can do. Like it's so easy to turn. Sorry, you can see my feet back here. Um, but um, but yeah, no, so trying to find all the things to make me happy in the meanwhile. Um, I drove to Georgia with Mike yesterday. And I will be flying back to Maryland on Wednesday. Um, everything in my house is already packed up. It's ready to go. <clears throat> Trying to find people to come help load up the truck um, on Sunday. So if you live in Maryland or you're going to be in Maryland, going to be around Maryland, and you want to help me load, just send me an email. Um, S-Uds at odiousoul.com. I'll give you my address. You can come help me move. <laughs> um, there's light boxes. Also can just use people who can clean. Um, tidy up behind as we load everything. Hey, Robert G, what's up? So, but um, but yeah, just I hate this in between part, you know. And uh, I heard K Pro is going on another trip though, so I'm gonna be anxious to see what kind of shenanigans she gets into. You're moving too. Oh, now do you already have? Did you already buy a place? That's what I want to know, Robert. Did you already buy a place? Um, I, uh, I've sold my house and I'm now I'm just impatiently waiting to buy a house. Um, it's like, it's crazy. It's just like, you don't know what you do. You gotta, you just gotta prove. So yes. But I mean, so like, are you going to be in between for a while? Like me, like kind of like semi homeless. <laughs> just feels so weird. Um, my, my buyers, um, did a rent back. Yes. <laughs> it's so uncomfortable. Now, my buyers, like, did a rent back, so I got to stay in my house for an extra month. Did you get that with yours by any chance? For four days. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Yeah, no, the whole process is just 10 days. Yeah, the whole process is just insanity. Like, it should be easier. I mean, I don't want to say that, but there's no reason why this should be, like, as stressful of a process as it is. Like... Like, seriously. Oh, don't be sorry. I, I know, like, I've talked to some people who, I was talking to one guy, I and burnout, yes. Oh, God, just, I mean, our process is done. Like, we have everything we need. I, you know, you live in a mobile home, so it's hard. Why is living in a mobile home hard? Just out of curiosity. Um my thing is, uh, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So like we're done, like we're approved. Like we got everything, like the money is all there. Like the documents are all there. We're just doing this appraisal. And then the appraisal came back funky and it's just, like, I feel like I'm being held hostage. Like we had an appraisal that was perfect, but did the collateral department ask that first appraiser to rewrite it as a conventional? No. Instead they waited made us wait two weeks for an appraiser who did some really shady stuff on the appraisal and basically is screwing us. And then we might be losing this house. It's just, but the sellers have already moved all their stuff out. So they're just impatiently waiting on us. Like I feel bad too. Like I'm a person, like I hate, I hate that these sellers are waiting on me. Like that just makes me feel bad. But, uh, but work is going great. Um, you got screwed out of 6% of the sale. I might need more details from you, Robert, about what's your process is going on. I'm sorry. Oh, because it's on their land. Oh, yeah. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. I guess it does throw all different kind of monkey wrenches into it, doesn't it? But, um, but anyway, so yeah, real estate side, buying a house, total shit show. Um, but like I said, I got to test drive a new motorcycle today. That was fun. Um, 
Um, I'm going to go see Matt Reif up in Philly in September. I just booked my airfare because I'm going to be in Georgia, possibly living in a box. Um, so I booked my flight to Baltimore. My kid's going to pick me up. We're going to drive to Philly, see a show up there. And then she's going to drop me off at the airport the next morning where I'll be sitting all day long. Actually, when does Copper and Dan go back to Philadelphia? Um, fortunately, I won't be driving, so I don't have to worry about getting my car towed. Uh, <laughs> um, not this time. But then, um, yeah, I'll fly back from Philly the next day. So I got that coming up. But otherwise, everything's just, like, impatiently waiting. Like, there's so many things I want to do and are trying to do, but uh, I'm afraid to make any plans. I look the same. Actually, I shouldn't because I'm a whole lot thinner than I was back then. I was like trying to think like I'm probably at least 25 pounds lighter facial wise. I mean, I hope I don't look that much different. I might get a weird angle right now. So all my fat's going, you know, um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to look too different. You know, I like, I look at pictures of me when I was like 21, I looked the same, only younger. And I can't say more innocent. I looked I was a freaking goth kid, so I, you know, I miss the chase, but I don't miss the chase. I I can't stand that there's still like stuff going on and people debating. Thank you, Robert. Um, like that stuff drives me crazy. It's like we know where the chest was found, and I can't believe people are still debating it. Thank you, David. Like, e I guess even though I'm so stressed out that like I just want to like drink a bottle of tequila and forget that life exists. <laughs> I'm glad you guys think I still look good. Um, but yeah, no, like this whole chasing is driving me crazy because it's just, uh, it's like, why are people still, I don't understand why people are still doing it. But I, I feel like I, what kind of closure do we want? Like we know where the chest was and even though people are debating it and like they're still saying that that's not the spot. Um, but like, we knew that was part of the risk with this. <gasps> hey, Davio. Oh, you're back. Oh, back to climbing. Awesome. You know what? Like I, as when I was packing up, I was taking all my climbing stuff, um, and packing it up. And I was like, you know what? I haven't gone climbing in forever. Um, one of the things that if, when, when we get this house, I will have a dedicated workout space. I'm going to turn one of the garage spaces under the house into like a workout zone. And there's a lot that I need to do to get better for the motorcycle riding at the track, because that is very physical. That is incredibly physical. So, um, hopefully I can build up some of my upper body strength. Cause like, you don't realize how much upper body strength you need to ride a motorcycle at the track because like the braking, when you're braking super hard, the only thing that's holding you up are your arms. Um, otherwise you're gonna fly over it. So um, I need to build up my upper body strength, which would be great for, for climbing. So I'd love to get back into climbing too. That would really help build up those, those muscles. I freaking hate push-ups. <laughs> it's probably because I don't have any upper body strength. I've never been able to do a chin-up in my life, except like the assisted ones, like with like the, um, like the really thick bands, um, my core, even though I don't look skinny and I don't have a six pack, my core actually is fairly strong, which is crazy. Um, I got pretty good core strength, my legs, I need to work on my quads more too for the motorcycle riding, but, um, but my core actually is pretty, pretty good. It's just upper body. I need to build up my legs a little bit more and I need to just like work on the, the endurance kind of part because, I'll start off strong and then by afternoon I want to like go to bed and <laughs> take a nap, which isn't good because like track days aren't cheap. Hang from hands, lift from legs. Yes, yes, yeah. That's I think that's why I did as well as I did climbing. I mean, obviously I was not climbing anything like you was because my legs were so strong when I did climb. And if especially if I could find like crevices to kind of like wedge into, um, I, if I could find a way to leverage my legs... It was perfect. But anyway, I need to get back to work. I just wanted to hop on and tell you guys that I'm still struggling with this mortgage thing, um, which is like just, it's, it's just, 
it's heartbreaking because like I have no control over it and it isn't, we're at the place right now where it's nothing that I've done, you know, it's nothing like it's no money wise. It's not like my credit history is nothing. None of that is holding it up. None of it's me. It's just the collateral department, the appraiser, and that crap is holding this up. And